The role of radiation therapy in adjuvant and in the neoadjuvant setting, I think, has been on the increase. I think we've really seen the value of radiation therapy in cases that we previously did not even offer radiation therapy. This particular patient who had known lymph node involvement, I think a high risk disease uh, in, in terms of being a HER2 positive um, biology is definitely a patient that I would offer adjuvant radiation therapy to. And I think when we look at the role of radiation in these patients, it clearly would decrease the risk of local regional recurrence. And there's a suggestion that it may help improve on disease-free survival, but it's really done with the goal of um, minimizing the local regional recurrence. In this particular patient scenario, if we change her hormone receptor status and make her a hormone receptor positive, HER2 positive, now known as a triple positive breast cancer, there are some different considerations for this patient. Uh, I would have expected a higher um, risk or amount of disease burden at the time of surgery. We know our pathologic complete responses in the HER2 positive hormone receptor positive patients are less. We also know that their risk of recurrence um, is a little bit higher. I think the role for this patient would then be in the adjuvant setting. I would definitely have added a um, anti-estrogen therapy to this patient. I think it's actually, there was a trial that looked at adding it up front because we know that that um, has a signaling pathway that may bypass the benefits of some of the HER2 therapies. And so they actually looked at adding adjuvant um, endocrine therapy up front in the neoadjuvant setting uh, to see blocking two different signaling pathways in these triple positive tumors would result in better outcomes and it did not. Uh, in this patient, I would add an aromatase inhibitor is what I typically use in my HER2 positive patients in the adjuvant setting and I would start that after surgery um, in combination with her dual HER2 targeted therapy. In the hormone receptor positive HER2 positive patients, I think there is a uh, some new data for extended HER2 therapy with neratinib. Um, I think clearly the data doesn't fit this particular patient because the neratinib study was not done in patients who had received prior pertuzumab. Um, so I always talk to my patients about there is another therapy that's been approved. When we look at the subset analysis of that particular trial that followed neratinib, an oral HER2 targeted agent following a year of the um, HER2 therapy, and at that time the trials were all Herceptin based, and so the standard wasn't dual HER2 therapy, so the patients did not get Herceptin and Progetta, so it's difficult to extrapolate. The benefit was quite small on the magnitude of 1 to 2 percent. The hormone receptor positive subgroup was the group that suggested that they benefited from the extended HER2 targeted therapy following their year of Herceptin. Um, so I've mentioned it to patients. I have not prescribed it to patients. Um, I talk about the caveats in terms of we don't know if there is that benefit in a patient that's already received the pertuzumab. And then we do talk about the side effects of neratinib, which is a fairly substantial risk of diarrhea. And you know, when these patients are now a year from completing their therapy, looking at another year of potential quality of life issues from toxicity with an unknown benefit, um, most of those patients aren't excited about going uh, onto neratinib either. This patient represents a HER2 positive hormone receptor negative patient that was appropriate for neoadjuvant therapy and continued to receive and complete a year of her adjuvant HER2 therapy. Looking at what the future may hold for this patient population, I think is challenging because the outcomes um, are so great now with the addition of HER2 therapy. Even if we look at the affinity trial where the pertuzumab was given in the adjuvant setting completely, we're looking at survivals and disease-free survivals of 90% plus. So it's hard to see how we're gonna further affect that or increase that. We do have some novel HER2 agents and dual um, novel drug antibody conjugates that have made it into adjuvant settings um, and trying to stratify now which HER2 positive patients 
requires which chemotherapy and dual HER2 targeted therapy. So there have been some trials in the node negative, small tumors, whether we could just do a taxane and um, Herceptin-based regimen. Uh, they've explored now the role of potentially TDM1 or Cadsila in that population, which has less overall systemic toxicity to the patient. Um, trials are looking at elderly HER2 positives and can we approach those differently with low risk disease versus high risk HER2 disease. So I think we're able now to really focus on subgroups of the HER2 positives and, and I think the biggest I think takeaway is now trying to de-escalate. Um, does everybody need the one size fits all chemotherapy regimen or can we start pairing it down to have a single chemotherapy agent with do her to uh, targeted therapy or just monotherapy um, as future strategies of really looking at uh, trying to now strip some therapy recommendations away and tailor it to a node negative, an elderly, and the hormone receptor positives.